Hello my soccer universe, match day one is in the books. We have seen every team at uh, once, not at least once, we have seen team exactly once and yeah, I think Brazil today showed that what they are made of, that yes, they were struggling at the beginning, but once they cracked the can open, it came flying and this could have gotten really really ugly for Serbia so I have to say overall a rather impressive performance by the tournament favorites now um, since we've seen every every team uh, it is really interesting now a little bit to talk who are now way early who are now the teams that we can actually see as favorites and I would say, I mean, Brazil definitely underlined the status. I would say Spain and England were impressive in their scoring sprees. I think Spain had had more than England, but in both cases, the opposition was not something that we can learn a whole lot from. And I also want to say that potentially France did something. Uh, and then there are whole other teams that we are not quite sure of overall. So, yeah. This is my first impression. Before we go into the games, two small observations, but these are really, really minor. I think in my first review, um, match review, I kind of said that the countdowns are over. No, the countdowns are still there. It is so annoying. It is the moment I thought, oh, I didn't hear them. No, now I heard them. So annoying. Uh, they have to get rid of that stuff. And the other thing, I think I mentioned it already, but it was now at the last game. It was really uh, glaring. You look at the stadium, you know that the stadium is full. I mean, this was the marquee game of match day one. And there's so many white spots there between the Brazilian fans. And you're thinking, are those empty seats? Are those empty seats? No, they're not empty seats. Those are uh, the Arab cities sitting there in their traditional garb, which I think in a way is cool. I mean, once you get uh, used to that, uh, it's pretty cool that uh, it's that they are sitting there in the, the, traditionally. It's cool. Absolutely cool. But yeah, I want to go group by group and we'll start with the earliest game. We, we go in group G uh, between Switzerland and Cameron. Um, thanks to me having to pick up my daughter. I saw, I think, about 25 minutes of the first half and the entirety of the second half. I saw a lot today. I really saw a lot because everything lined up perfectly in my schedule. Uh, and, you know, when I say I saw a lot, I had a lot of game games on, but, you know... Um, programming while watching most of the time only the evening game is the one where i dedicated take myself some time the other ones they're on and if i see something in interesting i maybe for a minute or two i watch and then i go back um unless it gets really exciting then it might be a longer break but that's normal but going to uh switzerland against cameroon um I actually have to say, first of all, <laughs> I'm going again with the second thought, but first of all, those Cameron jerseys are not good. And I actually would have preferred to Switzerland not playing all red, but in the tradition with white pants and Cameron in their flag jersey. I think it might have worked better, but uh, especially the pants look really, really weird, but also the shirt. Yeah, this should have been a Puma matchup. Uh, I thought that Cameron was overall quite organized and didn't look all that bad, although Cameron also falls for me in the category of teams that probably should not really be there. And if you don't know the list, I was thinking about it. teams that I think I shouldn't be there. I mean, from what they showed in the first game, uh, Qatar really didn't show much, but at least they're Asian champions. So I think they have some right to be there. Um, I'm not... Iran, I think the exter external circumstance, I think the first one that I really thought is Australia, because the way they qualified, it was just sheer luck. Um, I think Costa Rica only got uh, through to this uh, stage because they were lucky in the draw that they had to play New Zealand, because they barely made it out of CONCACAF, so uh, that was not... Uh, that was definitely a team that was not in there. Cameroon, I mean, Algeria is a much better team than Cameroon, uh, and they just bottled it. Cameroon are not that good, although, you know, at least in within Africa, they are a known quantity. But Cameroon is probably a borderline case. Ghana, to me, is a team that never should have qualified. They're just atrocious, but uh, actually acquitted themselves. So, 
rant over, sidebar over, teams that shouldn't be there, but that's how I feel uh, about those. But, you know, hey, they should convince me that they actually belong there. And I think at least Ghana did something. Cameron a little bit as well. Being organized, however, um, the sturdiness of the Swiss team is really... Um, something to behold of and i also have to say i mean uh in the second half i mean the game was not a great one let's face it for the first for first half but you know there was structure in both teams however the goal that gave switzerland the, the lead was so well worked because uh the, they just moved the lines of cameron back and forth until they had the defense all the way to to the right and then they're overloading on, on, on the left the camera defender doesn't go back in the ball comes to Shah Shakiri uh, who then passes it in and because the camera defender wants to think that he wants to block the uh, pass across goal he opens the passing lane to Mbolo who scores the goal and this is the story of course that Mbolo who was born in Cameroon uh, his parents are Cameroonians and they moved when he was six years old to Switzerland and he is now fully in the Swiss CAC system and it was very nice to hear an interview with him speaking in Swiss German. So uh, it's, it's a success story for Switzerland. And as an Austrian, I can only look with envy to Switzerland. I think that Austria tends to produce the better players. But the better teams and the larger overall quality is with Switzerland. Uh, and that is something that uh, they have done really, 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 really well. And from that moment on, there was only one winner because uh, Chupo Motting, uh, he had a, a half chance, but uh, it was more the Swiss that could, could, could score as the second one. So easy win for the Swiss. Um, Brazil against Serbia. Now let's go, go, go to the evening game. Uh, this was for me the best match in the first match day, Netherlands, Senegal could have lived up with Sadio Mane was there, but uh, Brazil against Serbia was for me clearly the standard, although it was pretty clear to me. Serbia needs to have an outstanding day to get anything from Brazil, and Brazil needs to have an off day to, uh, while Serbia needs to have a uh, super day if Brazil were to lose. And here it definitely plays also into it that the teams, although these two teams probably are, we had a pretty good run, the run up and build up. You could see they were already a little bit more organized than earlier teams, uh, but still uh, it didn't look quite right. And then uh, Brazil having a set team really, really helped them. The first half, well, Serbia tried a few things in the early exchanges. Uh, it became pretty, pretty clear that at first they want to really frustrate Brazil and there were only a few glimpses here and there that game was not very exciting. However, as soon as the second half kicked off, the game kicked into a different gear and Brazil just took over and it seemed inevitable that they're going to score. Um, I think uh, there was one was, 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 was a shot from... Um, Rodrigo, or, or no, Rodrigo uh, far out went over. Where you can kind of felt, you know, they better score soon because other, otherwise it's gold, gonna go and nil nil and they go get, get frustrated. And then uh, Neymar makes a run, uh, gets the ball a little bit too far. Vinny Jr. takes the ball off him, makes a shot that is saved by uh, Milinkovic Savic, and the rebound is put in by Richarlison. 1 0 Brazil in 62nd. And that was the, the thing that cracked the can open and Brazil looked them pretty good. There was a very short period when, you know, um, uh, um, Vlaovic and Lazovic came on kind of a, uh, like five minutes after, after, after the goal, but suddenly Serbia looked a little bit threatening after a series of corners and, and so on, you know, having Takar, kind of, kind of tall guys there. Uh, but Brazil put that to bed also rather because in 73rd, I mean, the run outside, then Vinny Jr. puts a cross in, and the way Richarlison takes it out of the air, turns it, and puts it in the internet with a scissor kick. Goal of the tournament so far, we don't need to talk much about this. This was just, uh, I was in awe, and then it could have gotten really, and I mean, really, really, really ugly for Serbia. Brazil, I mean, I, th I think. Um, Casim, uh, Casimiro hit the post or something like that. Uh, there were quite a few chances where it could have gotten really ugly for for Serbia. Um, and Brazil could have made three or four. 
only in Stop Exam they kind of tracked it back. Uh, and what's even better is that uh, GJ could s save all his big stars. He took out Paquette, they took out Vin Vinnie Jr., Richard, his name all came out. And uh, others came on, like Fred, uh, Rodrigo, uh, Gabriel Jesus, and Anthony, and then Gabriel Man uh, Martinelli for Rafinha. It was really, really impressive stuff that came from Brazil. And if they play like that, I actually really would have enjoyed it. And I think they would deserve to win this tournament. Uh, yes, it was not good in the first half. But once the camp got open, this Brazil team is was something else. This, to me, was the most enjoyable performance of a single team so far. And I include Spain in that. But I, while the passing was sharp and brisk, I actually enjoyed this... You know, the quick runs, the passes here and then and a little bit tri tri trickery. This is the Brazil that I want to see. And so I was very happy that I could see that. Going over to Group H, uh, another game that I actually looked forward to was Uruguay against uh, South Korea. And while it ended goalless, it actually did live up a little bit to its feeling. This was a really intense, really interesting game with chances created on both sides. And it was not the South Koreans where we all know, yeah, they're fast and they run hard um, and hit everyone on a counter. -act. No, this was not the case. The, the South Koreans came out of the play. They had their nice passing moves from the back uh, to the front. Uh, the only thing is they could not find the goal. I mean, there was a, f a chance in the first half where Huang, uh, a, really the pass comes in on the floor and he just has to hit, hit it right. But he puts it over the bar because he, he goes uh, back. That's... He, he, he literally could have chosen his corner there. Uh, and it was really interesting that uh, each half had kind of the same pattern. That first South Korea was a little bit more threatening. Then Uruguay, who have the individually better players and uh, a tad more physically than South, uh, South Korea, took control of, of, of the game in both halves, hit them the woodwork, and in the end probably should have scored a goal. Uh, Really, really interesting and intense battle with also great atmosphere. Uh, I think in the first half it was Godin who had a header on the post, and then in the second half um, Valverde hit the crossbar. And of course, uh, Hyun Ming Song had, had had his chances in in the Cavani when he came came on. It actually I thought that Uruguay looked sharper with Cavani than with Luis Suarez, so that was also in, in interesting. But this was an enjoyable nil nil. The only enjoyable nil-nil so far, but Ekkegis was not a bad game. Uh, where is then the other game in this group? Uh, for about 65, four minutes was a complete snoozer. Again, Ghana actually, uh, credit, credit, back, 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 credit, do they acquitted themselves? Uh, well, as I said, they were a team that I did not expect much from. However, uh, they did some good recruitment, uh, got a few players in, in, in there, especially I'm looking at Inyaki Williams, but also Kudus and, 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 and so on, uh, that, you know, we found some Ghanaian roots play for us, and so they do. So uh, the, the team actually looked not bad and actually frustrated Portugal quite a little bit uh, by having a very defensive set, set, which is not what Ghana really wants, one wants to play. Also, great stadium in the Stadium 974. Uh, but it seemed headed straight for a nil-nil again. But then Ghana gave away a penalty and Ronaldo converts it, becoming the first player to score in five World Cups. Uh, and I thought, you know, Messi became the first Argentinian player to score in four World Cups just a few days earlier. And he could have had five, but in the 2010 World Cup, he did not score. In the 2010 World Cup, Ronaldo scored also only one single goal. It was the sixth goal in the 7-0 defeat of North Korea. And it was an absolute fluky goal. It is those fine margins that go in this case Cristiano's way because Messi also had a few chances, I, I remember, against South Korea <laughs> where he probably should, uh, should have scored. It, 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 it was just... Uh, Weird statistic, but you know, uh, credit where credit is to Portugal in the World Cup. Um, have only done once well when Ronaldo was not the star. As long as Ronaldo was the star, they didn't make it far in most of these tournaments. So uh, that is something that has to go against him for sure. But it's a great statistic. And 
that meant now that Ghana needed to open up. And Portugal was a little, little bit, on, bit on the back foot. Uh, there were a few chances before uh, a Ayu put in the Andre Ayu put in the ball in the in the net on on, on, on the rebound. It came from the side. I think it was Kudos who created a chance. Who already was uh, dangerous before. Danilo Pereira um, deflects it and it falls right there. And you think one one. And now Portugal will have a really really hard time to get this. And Seemingly, Otto Ado had the same, 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 same idea. He took Kudos and Ayu off. His two best players who just created the goal to just shore up the defense. And Ayu was still celebrating, blah, 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 blah. And then Bruno Fernandes plays a wonderful pass to Joao Felice. And it's 2 1. Just, I mean, he had just been a minute out or whatever. Uh, Rafa Leao had also come, come on. And Fernandes again. Brilliant pass. I thought it was a tad too late, but it was just on on side and Leao with more or less the first touch of the game. Does what he does best, score a goal. Leao should start for this team. And then I thought, okay, that was the game. No, it was not the game because uh, Bukhari pulls one back just before the end of reg regulation. And then in stoppage time, it seemed like um, Portugal will see it out, but very late on. Iñaki Williams, who was clearly uh, full with power and full with adrenaline. Portugal goalie puts the ball, he's lying behind there, puts the ball on the floor and Iñaki Williams wants to get it to shoot in the empty net. I mean, this would have been the goalkeeping and the slapstick goal of the tournament. Alas, it did not happen. Portugal win it 3-2. Three, three, it was a labored victory overall. But now, if you look at the standings, they sit pretty top of Group H. Very likely to move on, and Uruguay also stayed just ahead of South Korea uh, in the other group. Brazil and Switzerland now looking really, really good there. Um, but you know, things can change. I think it will all come down to Switzerland against Serbia in Group G. Uh, projected standings did not change much because all the um, it went more or less as expected. So we really have not many changes, even the final bracket did not change a lot. We had to some movements in who are the favorites, not in the top five. We still have the same top five hanging. If you see them in my full background, uh, Brazil, France, Spain, Belgium, and England, although Belgium will come down, I'm pretty, pretty sure. But Portugal now uh, flip-flop with Argentina because they cut some points. Switzerland moved up ahead of Germany. That's a big one as well. So yeah, uh, Serbia also falling a little bit. Um, match day two. We'll start with Wales, Iran. Uh, that might be interesting. Qatar, Senegal is a must win for Senegal. I will probably not, uh, I, I will very likely not see, or I will not see Netherlands, Ecuador. And I hope I will see at least the second half of England against the United States, uh, which is a, another game that I'm look, looking forward to. It might be that my review video will post a whole lot later because I will have some catching up to do. That was it from me from the end of the first match day. Yeah, it was interesting stuff. Uh, please let me know what, what you thought about the performances today. Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel. see more videos like this. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.